Welcome to chapter 5, which is on non-opioid or non-narcotic analgesics. Let's look at what these terms mean. Analgesic is basically a pain reliever, a pain killer. So when we say something is an analgesic, it means that we're taking medication to help with pain. Non-opioid is basically when I think of non-opioid, another word for non-opioid is non-narcotic, I think of not addicting. So a pain color that you can't get addicted to, or it's very hard for you to get addicted to. In chapter six, we're going to look at opioid analgesics. And opioid is a drug that if taken incorrectly, if taken long term, you could get addicted to. So non-opioid are um, pain relievers that is hard for you to get addicted to. So because it's an analgesic, that means that it's a pain reliever. And we know that dental pain is very common. And sometimes what, the main reason why a client will come to us in, in clinic is to relieve pain. So it's important to know what medication they may be prescribed by a dentist if they come for pain. So let's try to analyze the two terms related to pain. So there's perception, which is the physical component of pain, which basically means the feeling of pain. So if I feel pain on my back, that's perception. My brain is registering that I feel pain on my back. Reaction is my emotional response to pain. And do I enjoy this pain or do I not like that pain? So how, how, how much of that pain can I tolerate? How much of that pain is unbearable? Right, so reaction is my emotional response to pain. Do I mind the pain? Do I like the pain or do I not like the pain? Believe it or not, there are some situations where um, you know people like pain. It gives joy to them. And then there's some other situations, like most people, where we don't like the feeling of pain. So the first non-opioid analgesic, the first drug that's not addicting, we're going to look at is called aspirin. And the fancy word for aspirin is acetylsalicylic acid. And acetylsalicylic acid is basically made up of two ingredients, of two components. It's made up of salicylic acid and it's made up of acetic acid. And when you combine them, you get aspirin. So let's compare non-opioid drugs to opioid drugs. So remember, these are analgesic agents. These are pain reliever drugs. And when we look at non-opioid, there's four drugs that we're going to look at in this chapter. And all of these drugs, so aspirin, Tylenol, Advil, and Aleve, they help with mild to moderate pain. So if you have mild to moderate pain, this is what you're likely to be taking. If you have moderate to severe pain, then an opioid drug may be prescribed. Now let's see how they work. So a non-opioid analgesic or a non-opioid drug or pain reliever drug, it, the drug interferes in this area somehow. So from last um, week, we looked at how pain is being uh, transferred to the brain. So if I got hurt on my thigh, for example, the signal will be passed through the nerve, goes to the brain, the brain registers it and says, oh, you're getting hurt, you're hurt. And then it sends a signal back to the thigh, which registers the pain, which feels the pain. So it's a process, right? It goes through um, a signal. When you use a non-opioid analgesic, when you use a non-opioid drug like Advil, aspirin, Tylenol, the drug interferes somewhere here. The drug kind of goes in, in the signal and blocks the signal. When you take an opioid drug, the opioid drug hits the brain, hits the central nervous system, and it tells the brain to just you know, slow down, to just relieve the pain. So it doesn't go through the nerve, it basically kind of hits the brain. So again, a non-opioid um, analgesic, it 
interferes with the peripheral nerve and opioid kind of depresses the central nervous system it slows everything down it calms you down and it makes you feel so much better one of the things that's mentioned here is the non-opioid drug inhibits prostaglandin synthesis and I'm, in the next slide we're going to look at more we're going to look more about what the prostaglandins is so we're going to review a little bit about the immune system let's say um i got hurt okay so this let's just say hypothetically this is my arm and i got a deep cut in my arm um maybe let's just say maybe i, I got um slashed with a knife god forbid okay so a knife slashed me and that knife that hit me or slashed me was very dirty it was filled with bacteria so the knife slashed me and now i have bacteria entering my body so the green thing that you see is bacteria entering um, my body when this happens the body recognizes that there's some invaders there's some pathogens there's some bacteria that's entering into my body and the body doesn't like it so what the body does in response is that the body so in in our body we have enzymes and let's just say one enzyme is called the Cox enzyme. Okay, so this is an enzyme is called the Cox enzyme. And what it does is it releases these yellow dots. And these yellow dots are prostaglandins. And what prostaglandins is going to do is it's going to do two things. One, it's going to go into the bloodstream and vasodilate or open up or make bigger the the blood vessel so see how over here the blood vessel is a lot more bigger that's what happened that's what's happening one of the things that prostaglandins is doing is it's vasodilating it's expanding the blood vessel why why is it expanding the blood vessel so that more blood can come to this area and the reason why we want more blood to come to this area is because we want all the white blood cells to go out and kill all the bacteria so we want the blood vessel to get bigger. We want the blood vessel to vasodilate, to expand, so that more blood can come in this area. And then all the white blood cells can go out to the area over here and eat up or kill all the bacteria. So one of the things that prostaglandin does is it vasodilates the blood vessel. Another thing prostaglandin does is it opens up the spaces in between the cells. So these cells that line the bloodstream, they're called endothelial cells. And what happens is the prostaglandins, it opens up the gap in between the endothelial cells so that the white blood cell can easily come out. Because here, it's very hard for the white blood cells to come out because there's not enough space for them to squeeze out. So the prostaglandins, they open up the space over here and allow the white blood cells to come out. And when the white blood cells come out, they can eat up all the bacteria. So that's basically, that, that's just one thing that happens when you get hurt. There's many other things going on, but just for the purpose of this um, class, I'm just expanding on um, the prostaglandins. So again, to recap, we have bacteria entering into our body. Enzymes notice that there's bacteria coming in and enzymes will start, the Cox enzyme will start by releasing these yellow dots. And these yellow dots are prostaglandins. And what prostaglandins does is it vasodilates the blood vessel so that more blood can come in this area. And it also um, makes the blood vessel permeable, which means it also makes the blood vessel, or it also makes the white blood cells be able to come out into this area here where the infection is happening and so the white blood cells when they come here they'll eat up all the bacteria and try to make it all healthy again there are two types of cox there's something called cox one and there's something called cox two and what their job is is to release the prostaglandins and when prostaglandins is released what happens is yes it does vasodilate and yes it does also um, allow the white blood cells to squeeze out and when that is all happening it causes inflammation you see how my arm before is not so inflamed and after when the white blood cells come out it's a lot more inflamed 
One of the reasons that happened is because of prostaglandin. So prostaglandin causes inflammation. The other thing prostaglandins cause is pain. Now I'm going to feel intense pain. I may also not feel so well. I may also have, be feverish. So prostaglandins, when they're released, they're good because they tell all the white blood cells to kill the bacteria. But the side effect or the downside is now I'm going to feel pain. Now my arm is inflamed. Now I'm going to have a fever. So that's just the gist of what's happening when you get hurt.